Okay, boys and girls, and those who haven't decided yet, um, this is an Earth Sound Research Super Guitar G2000 with Auxiliary Slave Output, made in USA. Um, what's your first hint that this came from the 70s? Okay, so Earth is a company out of New York. Um, there's not a lot of clear documentation or anything about them, but uh, they, if you have some, you know, by all means share it in the comments. But uh, they were not necessarily the most creative company out there. Um, there is a cabinet that goes with this that is also done in that lovely material. Uh, as you can tell, they have taken their visual inspiration from a custom amplifier in Chanute, Kansas, Bud Ross and Friends. But circuit-wise, this is a tube amp, and this circuit takes a lot of inspiration from a Fender Twin, from what I understand. If you look at the inputs, we have a normal channel with one and two, and a vibrato channel with one and two, and a bright switch for both. And volume, bass, middle, treble, reverb, and speed and intensity for the vibrato circuit. Gee, I wonder where that sounds really original. Um, it had a two-wire cord on it. This thing has been visited by Bubba. There's going to be quite a bit of work on the cabinet. Uh, for all I know, the amplifier itself will just shake out and be beautiful, and it'll all be cosmetic fixes. But, you know, we're never that lucky. Anyway, here's our power cord and uh, Bubba decided he wanted it longer or he ran over it with his truck so he taped grandma's crappy extension cord to it and uh, we have this lovely two wire piece of crap at the end of that so before we even contemplate plugging this in we're gonna put a good three wire cord on it so let me at least get the the uh, housing out of this this is one of those I bought it based on the pictures because it was on the moon and up for auction um, on the moon for me is in drive distance with in excess of 100 miles to go get something. So uh, obviously you can you can go and pre um, eyeball these things, but the end selling price was not too bad. Um, you know, tubes and transformers if those are healthy and they're like old US tubes like Sylvania's or something or maybe RCA black plates that would be awesome right yeah if we're that lucky you know we can probably break even on the whole shebang but there's gonna be a lot of work and I am gonna try to get this thing not only working properly but work with you know looking good too um, so let's I'm gonna pull the chassis out of the out of the uh, cabinet and okay we'll, well here's we our first interesting find um, I figured there would just be screws on the bottom and the chassis would slide out, but there are screws on the bottom. Um, two of them look like they belong. One of them is missing, and uh, um, I don't know, that one might just be missing its, missing its washer. But it looks like this is like an easy access port to the underside of the amp, and then uh, the rest of the stuff is like Allen keys. Could be. Oh, come on. There we go. We don't screw around with doing things by hand. Nobody got time for that. Okay, let's see if this will want to come out on its own or it's going to give me the finger. Eh, looks like it's going to come out. A little bit of plying. Whoa, okay. And that is where the reverb tank lives. So apparently if you need to work on the reverb tank, here it is. There it is. It is a Accutronics reverb unit. And I don't see any leavings of the mouse, but hey, look at that. We can see the underside of the chassis. And that looks significantly less horrible than I was anticipating. Um, Yeah, but where are the tubes? They're over here. They're all over here. There's other tube socket holes up here. So apparently this was like one generic chassis to do a lot of different amps. 
what do we got here? Uh, our Mallory capacitor looks yucky. Our filter caps down here, beaver capacitors, these look kind of kind of pukey too. So obviously, now these look like kind of a modern yellow type. These look more modern than what I was expecting. So I see one, two, which this is actually, that's not a multi-section. Okay, one, two, three, four electrolytic capacitors. That's not that bad. Five. And my phone goes off. Well, we're still going to get this out of the chassis. Interesting. Oh, that was a fun adventure. We got the cabinet chassis separated. Um, the handles on the inside are covered with some kind of insulating stuff. It looks like cardboard paper that is turning to dust with age, or maybe it's asbestos. Uh, anyway, you can tell Buddy really loved his amp because he bought the finest mismatched pile of tubes you could ever want for it. So this thing is um, realistic lifetime tube made in Great Britain. That might be a Mullard. Britain? Mullard? I guess. Maybe. Okay. We have Six L six G C Japan, another realistic lifetime tube. I should go cash in that warranty, huh? Hey, that's a bias spot there. I know that. All right, uh, made in Germany. S six L six is made in Germany. What else does it say on it? Westinghouse. Westinghouse. Okay. So. That one. And that is the same. That's a, that there's two out of four that actually match. That's nice. Okay. Let's take a look at what we have on the preamp side of things. Um, if this is following fenderish things, I should have four twelve AX sevens and two twelve AT sevens, maybe. See if the sleeve is going to come off or if it's rusted on. No, it came off. Okay. ECC81. 81. 81 is, that is a uh, 6L6. Or not, that's a 12AT7, yeah. Ooh, that one actually says IEC and Mullard on it. Huh. You know, even if this amp is a trash heap. If these tubes test golden and wonderful, they may very well just help me fix the amp up, even if I use new tubes. So that's another one, another Mullard. There's my phone going off. Oh, good. More people. This is Craigslist solicitations. This guy wants a certified check. And, uh,. I've had other people. I should show you some of these messages so you can read the emails that they want to communicate about Craigslist fines. And, you know, please email my wife at this address. I should just give them to you and then you guys can go have a field day with them. Seriously. I put something up for sale on Craigslist. Actually, things that are up for sale on Craigslist. Um, our SWR amp over there, that's all done. That's all done. I got the, that's an SKB cabinet there, the uh, case on there. And then down the row over there, there's a Fender 215 cabinet. That's all done. I look pretty. I do good cleanup work. Okay, anyway, back to task because <clears throat> my little brain is going to forget where I was. So we got two Muller uh, 12A T7s. That's kind of cool. Let's see what we got over here. Now, of course, I'm going to test these and they're going to be like garbage. What's over here? Maybe we'll find something great. See, that's what I'm thinking, because I'm not opposed to putting tongue saws in this new if I have to. Oh, 7025 Mullard. Oh, boy. 
Yeah, I have a feeling if these are also 7025 mullards, we are going. Oh, yes. Wait, what? Okay, I'm confused. This is a 12AT7. This is a 12AX7. What is this? Again, I know the positions, but because on Fender it goes, oh yeah, this is 7025. That is a 12AX. So this is the Fender. I'm thinking, again, I'm going to have to try to find as much information about this before I can. But Fender was 12AX or 7025. 12AX, 12AX. 12AT, 12AX, 12AX, 12AT. So they may have followed that and just decided to skip a hole. Seventy twenty-five. That would be a twelve uh, AX seven and another seventy twenty-five. So these preamp tubes are all Mullards. So let's see. What's realistic? What's a realistic asking price? I mean, I know people would you know probably ask an astronomical amount, but let's say we test these and they test good. I wonder what a fair asking price would be because I don't want to be a total butt face, but that could essentially buy me a new set of tubes and all the caps that this thing needs and other such stuff, and then I won't have to dump the bank on it. But before we can even risk turning it on, we got to do something about that power tube, and really I should do something about those caps underneath. So... Yep. We'll go with that. We'll stop here for now. And we'll do a little bit of, well, we'll pause here right now and I'll go do some tube testing and we'll see if we are uh, winning or losing. Okay, so our German Westinghouse tubes, Das ist kaputt. That one just got a fail, this one got a weak. Um, our British realistic tube scored a six which means it's mm, kinda weak and our Japanese realistic tube scored a seven which means it's kinda right in, at its half-life but the good news is is our mullards over here are 7025 uh, aka 12AX7s these things all scored excellent um, scoring nine to elevens on gain which is great and our 12AT7s didn't do bad. 12AT7s generally score a little lower anyway, but they were scoring 8s. So, yeah, they worked out good. So these are good tubes. The question are, is, is there, are they highly valuable tubes? Because if they are highly valuable tubes, I may just use them to finance repairing the amplifier.